Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob, your favorite YouTuber. Don't lie, you know it's true. Well, at least when it comes to networking. I... Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob, and today's video is going to cover route summarization and the route to null zero. Basically, why would we ever want to have a route to null zero? That's the garbage can, right? Well, it is, but if we look at the rule of route specificity, we should already know that the longest prefix length wins then administrative distance, then metric. But we want to look at that prefix length, and when it comes to route summarization, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you right now. Let's watch the rest of the video, and we'll find out. So let's take a look at this GNS3 topology that I made uh, for this example. It's pretty basic. We have a couple virtual PCs. So we have PC1 up here hanging off uh, this edge router. And then we have four more PCs down here hanging off this layer three switch. Uh, these PCs just kind of indicate um, four different VLANs, uh, four different networks uh, that we have attached to this layer three switch. And then the layer three switch and router are connected together via a point to point link, uh, which is a slash 30. So let's go back to the router right here. And so we have all these networks. So to give this router right here some intelligence to, so we can program it so it knows how to get to all of these subnets, we can just create individual static routes so we can just go IP route 10, 0, 2, 0, you know, so on and so forth. But another way of doing it, and this would probably come into play if you have a very large network, it might be desirable to summarize. So in summarizing, let's get rid of these individual static routes. And we can summarize this and we can accomplish the same thing with one static route, which is pretty cool. So let's create a summary route, but I'm going to go a little bit above and beyond. I'm going to show you guys how to summarize in a very basic way because we're only dealing with these four networks down here. So let me drag over Notepad. So first thing you want to do, the, the first thing you want to do, the first thing I do when I am subnetting and using a piece of paper or using notepad on the computer is I always make this chart. And that's because when you're working with binary, it goes in powers of two. So eight bits per octet, we want to start with 128 because when we half all the way down, we have eight right here. And then we're going to reference this to figure out where the increment would lie uh, and all of that good stuff. So start with making your chart and then put down the networks that you want to summarize. So we want to summarize the 10, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, and 4, 0 network and kind of swoop that up into just one static route. The way we do this is converting these IP addresses to binary. But we don't have to worry about the 10 and the 0 because that's the same on every single one of them. So we'll start in the third octet where these are different. So we want to do 1 in binary, 2 in binary, 3 in binary, and 4 in binary. And we can figure this out pretty easily because we made this chart. 1 in binary is... We'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. So if we match this up to this chart up here, this is off, 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 and then the 1 is on. 2, off, 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 on, off. All right, and then I'll just continue to work my way down here. So you see three, we want the two and the one on. And last but not least, four. So we go one, two, three, four, five off. 
one, zero, zero. Now, it's pretty simple. Where are the bits different? Where is there a change in pattern? So if we look at this, we see that right here, so one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth one, that's where it starts to become different. So we wanna basically just boop, draw a line right there, and then we have one, two, three, four, five. Look at your chart, one, two, three, four, five, eight will be the increment. So if we went IP route, 10 dot zero dot zero dot zero slash uh, wait what am I doing we're just counting the bits here we're not doing any fancy calculation for the subnet mask so um, one two three four five slash 21 the subnet mask I don't know why I started with the IP route that's something I need to put into the router. And then the subnet mass, 255, 255. We add up all of these up to here. So 248.0. So this is our summary route. Congratulations, you just summarized and created an aggregate route. So this 10.000 slash 21 sums up all of these networks and we can pop this in the router like so ip route 10.0.0.0 255 255 248.0 next top 10.255 255.2 let's see if we have reachability 10.0 Zero dot one dot ten two dot ten. So I'm essentially just testing, pinging all of these PCs down here. So far we have reachability, and this one right here. What if we go like this? And you know what? To give you a better example, is it IP ICMP? Let's do debug. Okay, let me try this again. You're probably wondering, why are you trying to ping a network that does, or a host on a network that doesn't exist? Oof, why did that happen? We're receiving a time exceeded received from 10.255.255.2. That means that the layer three switch is telling us that the time to live in the packet expired. Why did that happen? Well. The reason that happened is because when we created the summary route, it actually encompasses more than just these networks. Why, do you ask? Well, it's just the way that it works, because if we were to draw our line right here on the 4 instead of right here on the 8 like we did, well, that means that the increment would be 4, our first network would be 10, 0, 0, 0, the next network would be 10.0.4.0, and we would be out one of these networks. So the reason that we we received that um, the time exceeded message is because what we've done is we actually created a routing loop. Now the good thing is is that packets do have a time to live. It's not like a layer two loop uh, where if, if spanning tree protocol fails or maybe it wasn't set up and then there's a, a, a layer two loop that will just loop around indefinitely. Layer three loops are a little bit different. The time to live is decremented at each hop and it will eventually reach zero, then it's discarded and then an ICMP time exceeded uh, message is sent. It's still not good though because if you get enough of that stuff floating around, even though the packet will be discarded after a while, it can still create quite uh, quite the noise uh, on the network that you don't really want. So, can you see where I'm going with this? We summarized, put the summary route in. We have reachability, but we have a potential routing loop. 
So how do we fix that? Well, if you guessed, take the summary route. Where am I at here? Take the summary route, stick the same summary route on the layer three switch, except put it to null zero. Now we don't have to worry about that. So if we go IP route 10, 0, 0, 0, 255, 255, 248, that 0 to null 0, straight to the garbage. Well, now you're probably thinking, well, great. Now the traffic's going to be dropped because it's going to arrive down here at the layer 3 switch, and it's going to go to null 0. <laughs> but oh, how wrong you are. I'm just kidding. I don't actually think you guys think that. I think that you know, because I already mentioned the rule of route specificity, that this route to null zero is not going to be used. We have our summary route. Going to null zero. But any one of these networks here, slash 24, that's, that's a longer prefix, it's more specific. The summary route is a slash 21. So these slash 24s win, but let's go ping that uh, non-existent one again. Now we just get host on reachable. Let me drag this out a little bit. See it a little bit better. Oh, I guess it didn't uh, bring it over. Let's try that again. Just want you to see the full message. Now we get a host on reachable received from 10, 255, 255, 2, which again is the layer 3 switch. No more routing loop. Something that doesn't exist on here, which the 5.0 network doesn't. There's no. Uh, uh, there's not another more specific route. We have our default, but that's less specific than the summary. Therefore, it goes to null zero. The layer three switch drops it, and it sends uh, it sends a host unreachable message back to let you know that it was unreachable. So that is why you would create a route to null zero when you summarize uh, routes. Now, I do want to. I just want to show you how this would work out if we were using a routing protocol really quick. Uh, this will just take a moment. So let's get rid of that. So we got rid of that summary route over on the router. And let's do show run pipe section IP route on the layer three switch. We want to get rid of the route to null zero over here. All right, let's fire up EIGRP on both the router and the layer 3 switch. Let me just make sure that these are cleared out of here. Okay, and they are. So, let's... Did I spell that right? <laughs> router EIGRP, do autonomous system 1, and then let's be lazy. Yeah, let's definitely be lazy and do a uh, network quad zero. That just will throw everything, um, uh, every single interface into the EIGRP process. And that way I don't have to do it specifically. I mean, uh, stick every single one of them in there specifically. Same thing over here on the layer three switch. We'll go router EIGRP one, network quad zero. We should get some sort of confirmation that it, EIGRP has converged, and it did very quickly. Now, we should see that EIGRP, so every, all of these uh, networks down here, we should see an EIGRP route uh, over here on the router. Ten one, or 0, 1, 10, 0, 2, 10, 0, 3, 10, 0, 4. And then we'll probably have uh, a route uh, on the layer three switch for this guy up here. Because remember, we threw all the interfaces into EIGRP. So uh, do show IP route. Should have one EIGRP route 
and we do for the 10 1 1 0 slash 24. Anyways, that's really uh, quite irrelevant. Um, oh, and then uh, back over here on the layer 3 switch, do show IP route. So I want to show you guys that we don't have any sort of null zero nonsense or anything, but it really doesn't matter because we have EIGRP advertise these routes individually up here to the router. Now, let's, on the layer three switch, let's, let's go to g interface gigabit zero slash zero. Let's see if I can remember this. Uh, we want to, um, we want to have EIGRP summarize, uh, summarize this automatically. So let's try IP. Okay. Yep. IP summary address EIGRP autonomous system one summary address will be 10 zeros. Oop, not 100. Leaf, we're uh, we're set here. No, nope, we don't need to use a leak map. So let's send it. EIGRP is going to reconverge. Do show IP route. Here's our summary route advertised from the layer three switch via EIGRP. But let's pop back down here to the uh, layer three switch. To show IP route. Oh, what is this? EIGRP created a route to null zero for the summary address for this aggregate route. Did it automatically. That's the same exact thing we did when we were using static routes. And what I just showed you is exactly why it wants to protect against a potential routing loop because it knows or the people that made EIGRP knew <laughs> that that could be a potential problem. Any thoughts, leave them in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for sticking out this video with me. I really hope you learned something. And as always, I'll, I'll see you in the next video, I guess. All right, peace. Most importantly, why would we put a route to null zero anywhere? Well, there's a bunch of different reasons we could, a bunch of different reasons we do. But in this example, I'm going to show you why a route... I don't know why I'm trying to eat the microphone. <laughs> in this example, I'm going to show you why you want a route to null zero uh, when you uh, um, uh, create aggregate routes. <laughs>